Today, I got some new fish in the mail. It's always an exciting day when you get a new package at your doorstep and there's live fish in them. So today, I got some rare, they're pretty rare, some rare shell dwellers from Lake Tanganyika. They were shipped to me out uh, from Sand City Cichlids. I did pay for them. And uh, I'm gonna show you what those are and talk a little bit about these very cool fish. <music> Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. Now yes, I did get some new fish in the mail. Uh, they were shipped to me overnight. Um, so I got the notification on my email yesterday and they arrived at my home today at noon. Um, the fish that I got are Lapido Lamprologus Bolingeri. Hopefully I'm not killing that word or th that uh, name. But anyway, they are a, a shell dweller uh, endemic to Lake Tanganyika, I, I think along the Tanzania border in East Africa. The males are about two and a half or so inches in length, a little bit bigger maybe, and the females are about two inches. So I ordered three because they only had three in stock. Uh, the good uh, people over at Sand City Cichlids who I've worked with before, I bought my gold ocelatus from them. Well, they gave them to me. Um, I, what did I buy from them? I got some other fish from them. I think I bought some more. Um, but anyway, they shipped out two pairs of them to me. So they got two pairs. And so uh, they were waiting on the other fish so that they could send them out to me. So anyway, they arrived, they're in perfect condition. The, the box was warm, the heat pack was still perfect. And I put them um, in here once I acclimated them. I did a little bit of a drip acclimation because a little bit more of an expensive fish. It you know cost me a few bucks to get them here. So um, I just wanted to make sure that I babied them and took care of them properly. Now, as I shared, I did get four of them. Um, they are in a 20 gallon tank with lots of shells, rock work, and I've talked about this before with shell dwellers. So um, hopefully this will work out well with the two pairs. And if it ends up being where I need to break them up a little bit, then I've got some other tanks available to kind of spread them out. But uh, I am excited to have them kind of be active in this tank. It's the first day they've only been in here for a couple of hours. So they're still kind of being shy and hiding in the shells. I actually had the lights off and just turned it on just to make this video. The good news is that they are swimming around. I've seen them swimming in and out of shells and I did put some uh, brine drip in there to feed them a little bit as well. So uh, what we'll do is we'll kind of pause here and well, I'm gonna pause, you're not pausing and then I'll come back tomorrow, let them kind of get settled and we'll continue on with talking about these fish. Okay, so it is the next day. It's actually about 24 hours since I uh, last had the camera here and the fish are doing well. I fed them, I fed them uh, frozen brine shrimp and I also fed them frozen bloodworms while I thawed them out and put them in the tank. I was gonna feed them some live foods, like some live baby brine shrimp, but I wanted to just put a little bit of the uh, frozen stuff in there first and see how they took to that. And they went nuts for it, especially the bloodworms. They were swimming out and going all around crazy. So, so far it has been successful in this aquarium. They've acclimated, they're behaving normally. You might wonder like, why am I so excited about a small fish that doesn't have like bright colors? And the, the fact is, is I just love the way fish like this behave. I love how these fish interact with one another, how they swim, kind of dart around through the rocks and underneath the little cave rock areas that I've created, going in and out of the uh, shells. Um, I just really love these small, unique cichlids. As far as their appearance, um, as you can see, uh, very interesting, kind of like dark kind of giraffe like patterns with some orange around uh, some of the finnage, uh, but a very unique shell dweller and I'm very excited to have them here in my uh, possession. So they can be aggressive as shell dwellers are known to be, so you do wanna have enough space. I do have them in a 20 tall, depending on how things progress and, and as they spawn, I might have to expand to some other tanks. Um, but for now, I think it's fine. I did create a couple of large kind of rock mounds so that they can occupy different parts of the tank without seeing one another. So if I do have a couple of males that wanna have their own little space, they will be able to have that space without seeing the other male. They usually like to have about a foot or so square of area. So we almost have about that here. Um, actually a little bit more maybe uh, in this aquarium. So, so far so good. I am happy to see them doing well. I'm happy to see that they all arrive safely. They're all happy. They're, well, I don't know if they're happy, but they look like they're healthy and doing well and they're eating. So that is important. So there's one thing I do want to add. I don't want to forget it, but I forget about this. And that is that I also received 
free of charge. So thank you to Sand City Cichlids. I received some um, Neil Thalma shells, which are uh, basically, um, those are the snail shells that you would find in Lake Tanganyika. So when you see like images of Lake Tanganyika and millions of snail shells along the bottom that are occupied by different species of fish, they are all utilizing those Neil Thalma shells. They are illegal to export. Um, so any, any ones that you find in the US, you know, came here beforehand and um, they are very rare. So I'm very happy to have them. Apparently Sand City Cichlids has a supplier or had a supplier that uh, allows them to uh, sell those. But uh, anyway, um, I have those. I, I just have five of them. I put them in the tank um, just to kind of add to the authenticity of this shell dweller tank. I thought that was super cool to put those in there, even though I do have the extra large escargot shells, which I've talked about before. Now, speaking of Sand City Cichlids, and they are a company that I've purchased fish from before, I've bought fish from them and they've sent me fish for free before. So I just want to put that out there, but they do offer viewers of this channel a discount of 10% by using the code Tazawa. So if you go to their website, which is sandcitycichlids.com, and we'll put it down there in the description, just put in Tazawa at checkout and you'll get 10% off of your order. So if you are looking for some kind of rare shell dweller or some hard to get Tanganyika fish, fish or rock dweller fish and they've got a ton of different species of fish available. If you are looking for something then go ahead and check them out. They're a good company, they're hobbyists and uh, they're offering you a discount. So check it out in the, in the description below. Code is Tazawa. Now a little bit about breeding these fish. They are a shell dweller so they will uh, spawn in empty snail shells like other shell dwellers do but they also are the only, I think they're the only uh, shell dweller that will also spawn uh, readily in small caves if there are not shells available. So either way, you know, shells or lots of rock work that has like some cave work uh, and I have both uh, should be ideal for these fish. So obviously I've only had these fish for a day. So I don't have a lot of time with these fish in order to give you more information on my own experiences. But everything that I've read and learned about up to this point is that they are very similar to care for like other shell dwellers. So uh, because I have experience keeping gold ocelatus and multis, etc., cetera, um, I'm very confident that I will treat these fish well and give them a nice home and hopefully we will have some successful spawns. I would be very interested to read down below in the comments if you've ever experienced these shell dwellers or if you have other rare shell dwellers that you've worked with before. I'm always, you know, looking at uh, interesting cool fish that other people are keeping. So comment down below uh, if you've done that before and also comment down below what you think about these fish. Maybe they're not as exciting as some of the beautiful colorful fish out there but I just think they're so interesting. I love the personality of shell dwellers. They are very small, so you can have tons of activity in you know 20 to 30 gallons or so of water. And uh, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to it. I'm not sure if you can tell by the excitement on my face and in my voice, but very excited to see uh, what happens with these fish. If you do want to learn more about shell dwellers and different types of shell dwellers and how to care for them, then I would recommend clicking on this video right over here and watching that as uh, I will uh, share some more experiences that I've had with other shell dwellers. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.